gentlemen, Metallica. All right, when I was 15 years old, Aerosmith taught me the importance of the almighty riff with songs like S.O.S., Round and Round, Sweet Emotion, all those great stuff. And they also taught me how to combine two guitar players to the greatest effect. When the live bootleg album came out, I noticed that there was a poster of the band and Stephen from the 1978 Day on the Green, which I went to. And uh, I told all my friends that I was actually able to see myself, or what I thought was myself, pictured in the crowd <laughs> on the actual poster. That picture never left my bedroom wall, and I still play some of those guitar licks that I got off songs like Train Kept a Rollin', Sweet Emotion, Walk This Way, Combination, Rats in the Cellar. And in that way, the Aerosmith legacy still resides in me. So I just want to thank you guys for all the inspiration. And uh, incidentally, I have to thank you, Stephen, for finding my cell phone about six months ago. <laughs> uh, Stephen called the number marked mom and told her that he had my phone, and so, oh, you one man. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, wow. This is not intimidating, is it? Uh, I haven't been out of the house much lately, so I'm a little nervous, but uh, I wrote some of this down, so, uh, but it's, it's all from the heart. It's all from the heart. Um, there are a lot of people in this room tonight who are very fortunate and have a lot of means. I believe that when you're successful in your selfishness, you consider your time to be the most precious thing you have. I also believe that the biggest sacrifice you can make is giving people your time. In 1993, one of my best friends, Rich Birch, was dying of AIDS. Through all the years I was fortunate enough to know him, I always thought he epitomized rock and roll on a street level. His hero, the guy he worshipped, is a guy who epitomizes rock and roll on a performance level. That guy is Steven Tyler over there. When Rich's time was running out, I psyched myself up to call Steven, who I'd met only a couple times on a casual level, to ask if he'd give Rich a call and rub some of that Steven Tyler magic off on him. Not only did Steven make me feel at ease at calling him, but jumped headfirst into calling my friend Rich. Over the course of the next few weeks, Stephen spoke to Rich often, and Rich would call me and roar about how truly amazing it was to get so close to Stephen Tyler during the last few weeks of his life. I know it made a difference to Rich, and for that I'm extremely grateful to you. For the time, the key word, time, that you spent with him. Your band's perseverance and accomplishments are inspirational to my band on a professional level, but giving your time for people like Rich is truly inspirational to me on a human level. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, hi. It's the first time I, uh, well, since rehearsal, second time I've been on a stage since coming out of rehab and uh, <sighs> feel, uh, feel a bit nervous. But I feel this is uh, very fitting to come here and express some love to uh, what I would like to call friends in the music business um, who have inspired me greatly. Um, I, just, I would like to just close my eyes and, and imagine myself in my room um, as a teenager listening to uh, Toys in the Attic and Rocks and playing the shit out of them till the grooves were worn out, listening to every Brad and Joe lick toward the very end. I could sing every one of those things. I would turn them up so loud to get every last note that the next song would scare the head of me. Especially little things like uh, before my favorite song, um, uh, Nobody's Fault, <clears throat> the uh, little uh, 
someone walked into the studio and I heard a door or something. I thought that was so cool. <laughs> they didn't take that out. But anyway, um, a, there was plenty of posters on my wall, and the one, uh, the one that really meant a lot to me was the, the one of Stephen and Joe up there singing into the same mic. And uh, my mom, uh, God rest her soul, she was an artist, and she... Uh, she projected my image onto the wall and painted me as Stephen and as Joe and in a silhouette and painted. It was so cool. It was in my room. And I just really couldn't decide which was cooler, so I decided to sing and play guitar in a band. <laughs> so, um, also, notes on my hand. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge the... Uh, how much I admire you as humans in this, in this music business. It's really tough to stay human, and there's a lot of people that demand a lot of things from you, and all the hell that you guys have gone through and come through as stronger people are extremely inspirational to at least, especially myself, someone who has fallen, and I love you guys. Thank you. Smith released Draw the Line in 1977, the band's appetite for drugs had eclipsed their thirst for success. Strangely, the album's title mirrored Aerosmith's day-to-day -day existence. We were just fortunate enough not to get the, that one batch of bad drugs. I just didn't drive off the road. It's quite easy to kill yourself. You forget how uh, frail the human body is. We were so stoned back then that it takes up so much of your mind that you forget that you're an abandoning human beings took away from me, it stole. All of a sudden, this close huddle that I was used to was, you know, not happening anymore. And really started to become a factor in people showing up for work or being able to work. How do you deal with that? On tour, Aerosmith was still a huge draw, but their loyal Blue Army of fans were witnessing a band on the edge. Back in the studio, it was the same old song and dance. We tried doing it the way we usually did, which was go in there and get as f***ed up as we could. It just didn't work that way anymore. I would listen to a song that Joe and I were writing when the din had worn off of whatever it was I was taking and go, holy, what is this? What is this crap? I mean, this doesn't work at all. It's not a song. It's terrible. Stephen and Joe had lost what brought them together in the beginning. Their music. In its place, a constant craving for drugs. Joe with all his brashness and F all, he'd have the dope and I didn't. I'd be sick banging on his door. Come on, man, I'm dope sick. Now I'm kind of like, well, what are, you, what are you out there yelling at me for? He didn't care. And I remained pissed off all these years. The brewing tensions within Aerosmith came to an ugly head backstage after a sold out gig in Cleveland in 1979. Sick as a dog with life in an increasingly out of control band, Joe Perry declared he'd finally had enough and quit. I was just so pissed at the moment. I don't think I ever gave it a lot of thought. You know, did I really hate Steven? Did I really hate the other guys in the band? I don't even think I thought about it. All I felt was that, that there was just too much tension. I couldn't, couldn't do that anymore. Or maybe if we had been a little more mature about it, we would have just taken a vacation. But instead, you know, it was ego and, and we let it all happen. I had a relationship with Joe that unlike any relationship with anybody else, I dreamt for, I prayed for meeting somebody like this. But I didn't have him. It was over. Aerosmith as they knew it was over. But were they doomed to fall into rock and roll obscurity? Or could they somehow jumpstart their career? An unforeseen phone call would decide their fate. Words like from Metallica, away. It's not a heart there. Those guys are going to through a lot of stuff themselves. So you help them through a little bit, right? Yeah. What? You help them through a little bit, right? Yeah, we all help each other, you know? Yeah. It was uh, very strange, uh, but very cool to see the soft side of Metallica, you know, that even they have the heart beating in there. Coming up, an Aerosmith classic, Kid Rock Style. 
My name's Kid Rock, and uh, I'm here kicking ass tonight. Tune in and see why. Shakira shimmy shakes and shocks the house. Oh, Shakira. <laughs> How you doing? How are you? In Chapter 4 of the Aerosmith story... A phone call pulls the band out of the ruts and into a groundbreaking collaboration that would reignite their career. And later, Liv Tyler and Jennifer Aniston honor the icons. 